Thank you. Uh, hi, everybody. I'm very happy to be here with you to, tonight. Um, my name is Jules. I'm a design advocate at Zero Height. And I uh, used to work uh, previously in agencies where I helped uh, many clients uh, set up and build a uh, design system. I also work uh, in schools, um, guiding students uh, to, about the design system issues and also uh, the design current issues. Uh, and now I'm very happy to be able to uh, share all my design system expertise uh, to the whole design community and help uh, uh, yeah, and help this community build a better future for this system. Speaking of future, uh, I will really wanted to, tonight to share with you uh, my vision about what this uh, future could be uh, for these systems, what the future of this system uh, could look like. And as an introduction, you probably have noticed with my accent uh, that I am French. And I thought that as an introduction, uh, it would be very interesting to play with one of the most iconic, uh, the most famous uh, symbol of the French culture, which is the croissant. The thing is, a few months ago, I was just watching uh, TV, and there was this documentary about uh, croissant, how croissant were made in France. And I was quite shocked, actually, to learn that most of the croissants that you can buy in bakeries in France are actually not homemade. It's frozen croissant. And uh, I'm, I'm sorry if you, if you didn't know, I'm as disappointed as you. Um, but what was even more disturbing and shocking is that they did a test and asked people in the street to try uh, two, two different croissants, one homemade and one frozen croissant. And almost everyone preferred the frozen croissant over the homemade croissant. And now you're probably wondering, why is he talking about croissant? What is the point with these systems? Well, the thing is, while I was watching this documentary, I couldn't help myself thinking, are we doing the same things with our digital products today? Are we also you know, trying to automate so many things uh, with design systems to make uh, digital products more and more automated? Uh, and are we going to reach the same success as Croissant, uh, being able, for example, to completely automate uh, a digital product that it would be even better that if we did it in a manual way? Well, this is clearly, you know, the starting point of my thought on this topic. And before going further, I thought it would be interesting to, uh, you know, look at the past so we can better anticipate the, the future of these design systems. Um, the thing is, I don't think actually the design systems are so innovative after all. And it can actually makes sense that we talk about design systems uh, right now. Um, and I don't know if you... And the, yeah, the first thing you need to understand about design system is that it's just you know, a, a framework, a methodology that you need to learn. You need to know how to use it to, so you can better break free from it. You can, so, you can, so you can be able you know, to hack the system. And I don't know if you ever struggle uh, explaining what design systems are to your colleagues or uh, your teams, but I find this Walt Disney video very helpful uh, because you know, it's a really good example showing uh, how uh, automation of a design can work. Um, and what I really like, actually, with this example is that um, it, only de it also demonstrates that uh, automating things in design is not something that new, actually, is that even back in business day, uh, the aim was uh, already to automate uh, uh, as many things as possible to be as efficient as possible. And what I also like with this, um, the, the, this example is that it also brings an excellent answer to a recurring question, are design systems killing creativity? And you can clearly see with uh, both of these cartoons that uh, there is the same skeleton behind that articulate both of these cartoons, but still you can also see that they are completely different. They have completely different characters, completely different uh, backgrounds, context, universe. And this is why I think you know, design systems are relevant today, because it will help, um, designer, it will help setting a designer free uh, from repetitive tasks and to be more creative. And speaking of creativity, uh, there's also another example I like to share. Uh, it is a test they did in schools and they uh, asked to children to complete a clock drawing in only 10 seconds. And without no big surprise, um, all the results were more or less the same in only 10 seconds. But then they asked them to do the exact same thing, but this time, in 10 minutes. And this time, the, cre the, the, um, the results were way more creative and way more different. So obviously, you know, the less time you have to do something, the less creative the result. And uh, yeah, 
basically, you know, it's, this is why I think you know, design systems are important. Design systems are not going to kill creativity. It's just going to help designers to be, uh, yeah, to set designers free. Uh, because I don't think designers, as designers, we have any value by doing the same buttons or the same icons or the same title over and over again. I think we have so much more to, to, to bring to the design industry. Um, the other thing I really like about design systems, uh, it's that it questions uh, the foundation of a brand. And I was really curious to know more about the history of a brand. Let's let's stay in the past for a while. And there is this excellent talk by Base Design at the Kick Festival in 2019 that uh, you know uh, explain uh, where the brand uh, co come from and where it's heading now. And uh, I think it's important to understand the history of brands so we can better understand why design system are relevant today. You need to. Go back actually in Farmer's Day, where they needed to uh, brand uh, their herds actually to mark their ownership. Um, they, they use a hot iron technique, you know, to, to brand their herds. And, we, and they started with a simple iconography actually, uh, representing their names or family. Uh, but as more farmers needed to brand their herds, the more icons there were. And it was more and more difficult to distinguish uh, one icon from the others. This is why we started to add uh, more uh, shapes, more colors, more decorations, uh, baseline, etc. And I guess we could say maybe it was the rise, you know, of the brand logos that we know today. But over the decades, we had more and more and more uh, logos around us, and it was more and more difficult for brands to stand out from the crowd. Uh, this is why you probably have noticed something since a few years. Uh, brands are, are using something different to stand out, and it is storytelling. I'm sure you've already seen uh, some Apple commercials or Nike advertising, and you probably notice that they're not trying to make you know, the logo bigger. They're not just trying to tell a story and to uh, create some emotion with their users. And there's something else also you may have noticed, when, when you have a look at uh, the most uh, prominent company's logo, uh, that it's just that they start to all look the same, you know? Same font, uh, same structure with an icon on the left, uh, same colors. It's even more obvious if you only focus on the text of these icons. Uh, you really have the same font, the same boldness, the same serif. Uh, brands, you know, are not trying to stand out anymore from the crowd. They are more, you know, trying to ensure their visibility on every screen, every size, every constraint. Uh, the, the aim is really, you know, to, to be the more visible possible and the more accessible possible. Um, but, uh, once again, we come to, to, we come to a saturation point and more and more brands are, you know, uh, uniform and are using storytelling. And now brands need to find something else uh, to stand out and to distinguish from, from the others. And this new thing, I'm sure you know it, it's the experience. Uh, today, to defining a brand's positioning, uh, the brand, yeah, uh, a way for a brand to, dist to distinguish themselves is working on the, their experience. Uh, you can use the same codes as other. Your brand uh, will distinguish themselves um, uh, by its positive action loved by its users and especially in line with the storytelling. Um, you know, action speaks louder than words. And uh, you can't just uh, tell something anymore. You have, to, you have to act, you have to do things. And I think that one of the best examples of branding using experience is uh, Patagonia. Because uh, I think you know, it's uh, the on, maybe the only brand that uh, you know, act more on things than just saying. And uh, I'm sure that every other brand says that they care for the planet. But there's maybe only Patagonia who really go on the street and protest to show their concern about uh, the planet. My point is, uh, brands are not so much concerned about the UI anymore. They are much more concerned about the experience. And today, actually, brands is much more than its UI. Um, so yeah, it makes sense if every, every, uh, today our, all our brand and all our product uh, look all the same. And I even think that it may be a good thing because uh, if it might help our users to find what they need more efficiently, then why not? But still, there's still so much uh, to do that. There's still so, so many other things that uh, automation cannot do. Uh, and it's all about uh, the experience and the emotion our user will feel with our product and uh, with our brand. And I think that it's a whole new area to play with for us. 
So now it's time to go in this future. And even if I don't really have a crystal ball to predict this future, I'm sure that we can guess uh, by analyzing our context, our habits and tools, uh, what this future look like. And I really think that the future of design system will be, uh, will be two different things, uh, but very related. It will be both automated and human. Um, it is thanks to automation that we are going to bring back some humanity into our project and into our work. And I think, you know, uh, one of the good examples about, uh, about, about this is uh, how design tools are closer and closer to developer's state of mind. And uh, one good example that you probably know if you're in the design system industry are design tokens, because I think, you know, design tokens is a really great way, a great evolution you know, into our tools to help uh, designers and developers to speak the same language and to better understand each other. Um, the other thing is tools are also blending with each other. And it's not so much about uh, speaking the same language, it's also sharing the same space. And I think, you know, um, this is quite striking actually with uh, Figma interface that I completely transform our approach uh, of, to collaboration. Uh, I don't know if you remember for those who worked for um, many years in, uh, in, in the design industry, but before we had Figma and collaborative tools, uh, you know, we had all our local files in our, our, on our computer and we only shared the final result in a, at a specific moment in the project timeline. And to be honest, I don't think it was a, the best way to break silos, right? And, you know, seeing this, you know, everyone, uh, designers, engineers, and product manager, um, and many more on the same file may be normal today for you, but uh, it hasn't always been like that. And I think that, you know, allowing our tool to be more, to, more and more automated and uh, helping us to be uh, uh, to, to, to better collaborate all together. I think, you know, it's a great evolution we tend to. And uh, I think, you know, it, it will re really help us uh, to, to, to better collaborate. And this is why I think that the future is going to be partly more human uh, because, uh, be and because of uh, this automation. On the other hand, I know that uh, one of the benefits that we, we, we like to, to tell about the design system is about the cost reduction uh, for, for the front-end development or the design mockups. And uh, it's true, but uh, it also implies that we are probably going to reduce some part of these roles in the next future on, on the projects. And in my opinion, UI designer may be the first concern, especially with what I just told you previously with the brands who, do, who don't want to invest uh, so much on the UI and, more, and focus more on the experience. Um, so I know it may sound a bit scary, uh, but if you've been in the design industry for a while now, you know that it's part of the designer role to, to be in constant evolution, uh, whether it's the it is with a, with a tool, uh, if, you, if you remember Photoshop, for example, or um, or the constraints when we had to learn about responsive design, or the me even the, the methods when we, uh, with Agile or with design thinking. I mean, our job has never been the same since we started, and it probably never will be. So if tomorrow we have less UI to do, it also means that we have, uh, there's, there's more, it leaves more room uh, for other skills uh, to, to, to explore, so, such as facilitation or architecture or coordination, uh, designing emotions. I mean, there is still so much to do that uh, automation doesn't know yet and may never know. And moreover, I wouldn't be surprised to see new emerging roles in the next few, few years around this system. Like, for example, an architect designer who really in who, who would be in charge to articulate uh, very complex design systems regarding their different brands or products or targets. I really think we really, we, we need you know content writer to write a proper documentation, and it will be you know uh, a dedicated full uh, full time job, and it could be helped by a doc documentation designer, because you know no one reads the documentation, and you need to make it more visually appealing. Uh, and I'd, I'd be very curious to also see if we uh, have some kind of a design system community managers because uh, a design system is really about the people and you need to federate your people around your product um, and uh, yeah, to have a strong communication about it. And finally, yeah, atomic designers because 
maybe it's the way the UI designer could evolve. And I think, you know, being able to be more expert on the way you build your UI uh, libraries and with, you know, with a component logical and atomic design logical uh, is, uh, yeah, is, it could, could be an interesting uh, uh, future for, for designers. I also see a new, ch uh, a new change in the way we are working in, a sp in, in with our tools. Uh, because of uh, the, the UI reduction, because if we spend less time doing UI and maybe and more time doing UX, um, I think it will be a good opportunity to us to go back to a more natural way for us to work. Uh, and I, what a better way for designers than just you know sketching or scribbling uh, a path or a journey, uh, and, um, and, uh, and 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 that's it. I mean. Uh, this, with this exam example, I find it very interesting that Figma is offering, you know, the ability to draw directly on their tool on an iPad. And, you know, the dream would be maybe to uh, be able to have a sketch and translate it directly uh, into a coded interface. But this future actually is already here and I'm, you probably are aware about it because things like uh, Wizard or Airbnb already started to, with uh, AI technology to uh, translate a sketch uh, into a coded interface and it, and, it, and, it, and it works. And this is one of, 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 um, this is one of my points about, um, about the future of the system. And I, I really think that AI could be more and more involved into our tools. Imagine tomorrow you start a new project uh, just by taking a picture and the AI uh, automatically analyzing uh, colors, shapes, and patterns and uh, translate everything um, in, um, in design elements that you can reuse. That would be great. That would be great, right? And actually, I think it's great, but I think we can think bigger and I think it could be even more than just one interface or one uh, design system. It could be actually... Uh, more about personalization and customization. And I think that this is interesting how material design evolved with material U, uh, letting more space for uh, uh, personalization. You still have a solid system behind your product, but you have more flexibility and uh, customization. So now, imagine you have a solid, uh, you, you have a system powered uh, with AI and uh, the interface is now able to adapt to the users regarding their settings preferences, but also maybe um, in, uh, in what location uh, they are, or what time is it, or even maybe uh, how they feel. And I think that you know, creating interfaces for designers uh, that can adapt and evolve, uh, it's really exciting, but uh, it's also maybe uh, the most human thing uh, possible for us as designers to do uh, on, the, on these digital projects. And finally, I also think that we are sooner or later going to end uh, to face the end of the design system. But uh, don't worry, I think it, it will be a great thing. My, uh, I, I think that you know today screens have taken over, and uh, we need you know to get away from screens more and more uh, to preserve our mental health, but also to reconnect with each other. And I'm sure that everyone here is aware about this screen addiction. And my point is, uh, we need to, you know, to start uh, creating interaction uh, interfaces uh, involving fewer screens. But I'm not saying that there won't be screens at all anymore in the near future. I'm just saying that um, we need to start, you know, uh, think about new ways of interactions um, involving something other than a screen. And once again, this is already happening. Uh, you, you, you all know, for example, that this, uh, you know, this new notif notification saying how much time we spent on our, on our, on our screens this week. And uh, there are also new events, new kind of events emerging. I've attended one, 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 of, one of these events where you, you, it, it was a no phone event. You have to put your phone in a bag and it's still locked for, for the whole event. It was great, actually. Uh, you also have Google Home, Alexa or Siri who create you know, new interactions without looking at the screen. Uh, and same with uh, social services uh, like Clubhouse or Twitter Spaces, who like who try to create some new social ex um, social experiences with uh, based on our voice. Uh, and I'm sure that you already noticed how much uh, our, vo our voice messages are increasing in our into our discussions. We are not just typing anymore; we are sending uh, voice messages. And 
and I think you know it's one way for us to get away from screens and maybe to take 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 control back on our lives. And I'm also very curious to see what's going to happen with um, with uh, Snapchat Snapchat's uh, drone uh, Pixie because I think it's an excellent answer to one of our needs, uh, which is you know taking snapshots and memories with our friends, but without being the slave of this technology anymore. Um, Finally, I think that uh, these systems are just one of the many steps to come. And uh, to be honest, I secretly hope that these systems uh, are going to soon uh, are going to end sooner or later, uh, because it would mean that we succeeded in industrializing uh, projects and setting designers free and many people free uh, from repetitive tasks. And just as we faced the birth of World Wide Web and had to learn how to build uh, web pages and then to upgrade these pages with Flash and make it more accessible with HTML5 and then rethink our way of, of building web pages uh, for different screen sizes, I think that now we are at this new steps in the digital journey and this step is a uh, design system. But I think there's also something after a uh, design system. And this is why I'm really convinced that um, Sooner or later, uh, it will be so much integrated and normal to work with design systems that tomorrow, design system will be a standard thing and it won't be you know, a thing anymore. It will be completely integrating in our, in our workflows. So to conclude, and to go back with the croissant metaphor, as a conclusion to the documentary I was telling you about, uh, is that a small group of, a small group of bakers uh, in France are trying to create a label uh, to display on the bakery, saying that this bakery is selling true homemade uh, croissant. And it made me wonder, and I'm asking you the question, I don't have the answer, uh, are we at some point going to do the same thing maybe, uh, when we will need to create a, a homemade digital product that doesn't involve any design system or any automation? Uh, would it be relevant at some point to display a logo, or label, anything um, that, that would say to our, to our users, you are now experiencing a, a homemade digital experience. What do you think? <laughs> Thank you for listening. Uh, if you want to know more, uh, we wrote an article about this topic. Uh, it's, on the, it's on our Zero Hide blog. And uh, yeah, feel free also to join our Zero's uh, Slack. Uh, it's, uh, we are very friendly. And uh, yeah, we're also hiring if you're interested.